myself Santosh and currently I'm working as manager in Microsoft, taking training for KSR for the last five years. Let's get started. I think we have the magical number of 50. Let's get started and it's getting recorded as well. Yeah. Now, uh, in the last two class, we discussed about what is this data engineering? And of course, I need to accept the fact that the top three skills is going to be the data analyst, data scientist, and business analyst. But nothing works without data engineers. Okay. You have a very brand new car. Okay. It's a BMW or Audi car with the automatic steering. Okay. And uh, it is more than Tesla. Everything is there. It's a perfect car, but you don't have fuel. Can you run it? Can you use it? Can you use the car? A brand new car. Every feature is there with no fuel. You, the same thing is happens. There are top skills in the market. Data analysis is a topmost skill where you can visualize the data. You can talk, uh, start talking about the business. You can do wonders. You can come up with a unique charts. Unfortunately, if the data is not proper, you cannot do anything. Okay. Now, listen carefully. You have fuel. I'm not saying that you don't have fuel for your car. You have your fuel. But in that fuel, imagine that it's only half of the fuel. Okay. Take, let's take a one liter water bottle. Let's take in that half of the liters is petrol. Since the data is less or the petrol is less, you start mixing up some water. You start mixing up some water and you fill the can and you pump it to your BMW. Will it run? Will it run? No. Why? 50% is fuel, right? But that is not pure uh, fuel. The same thing happens with data. If data is not pure, forget about all the other technologies. Data engineering is the root and data engineering is the must technology for all the other technologies to work. Okay. With that, we have also seen some uh, different um, like use cases, how it is going to be useful for social media, how it is going to be useful for banking. And I've also given a use case of Amazon. Then we were checking about the uh, reasons how the big data has been generating. It's basically because of the internet usage, smartphones, sensors, smart devices. And moving on, we have also seen a couple of uh, layman examples. And finally, we talked about some ETL tools. So I've already told you your ETL, data engineering, both are related. It's almost same. ETL means you're extracting, transforming, loading. That is what you're also going to do in data, en data engineering. But whether you do it in on-prem or cloud, that really matters for us. Okay. With that, we had a lot of issues with on-prem. And finally, we had a use case. We had a use case the most useful use case from KSR perspective. Imagine I have to store one terabyte of KSR data. What I will do right now, I'm doing it in my laptop. My laptop charges around one lakh. But in future, if KSR data volume increases to 10 terabyte, can I go and buy 10 laptops? Definitely no. That's not ideal because maybe I can buy which is worth of 10 lakhs. But what if it becomes 100 terabyte? I cannot spend it for 100 laptops. That's not possible, right? With that, we have also seen we are moving to cloud. And in the cloud, we are going to choose Azure. Now, this is what we have discussed so far. Now, just to add on, the technologies that you have to know will be SQL, Python, data warehousing concepts, big data with Hadoop, Spark, and PySpark. And finally, majority of the portion will be in Azure. Now the choice is yours. You can either use AWS or you can use Azure or you can use GCP for building your pipelines. Until the last part, the topics are going to be same. I've given a very good example. You want to eat pizza. Whether you will eat it in Pizza Hut or whether you will eat it in Domino's, it's your wish. You will look at the taste, you will look at the pricing, you look at the distance, you look at the offers, and you look at the cashbacks. That's what even I do. Same way, when we explore up different cloud services, data engineering, the first choice technology will always going to be Azure. Microsoft's Azure is one of the best, best, best cloud service for specifically for data engineering. And this is a roadmap that we are going to follow. With that, today we are going to start with SQL. Okay, done with the introduction. Two days done. 
Now let's see what is the SQL. Why you need the SQL? And then we later we will see why we need Python. Data engineering is like a big rock. Data engineering is like a big rock. To lift this rock, you need two hands. That two hands is nothing but SQL and Python. I repeat, data engineering is a rock, the big rock. If you want to lift a rock, you need two hands. One hand is going to be SQL. The other hand is going to be Python. If you learn this, majority of the data engineering will be easy. I'll set up the context and the expectations of this entire course. Even if any CEO of a company joins, we are going to start everything from scratch. Even if you already know certain topics, please bear with them because this, the entire course is designed that we'll be teaching everything from scratch. Even if you bring any graduate person, 10th standard person or 8th standard person, he has to understand the topic. And that's how we are going to take forward. Initially, it will be very slow. Maybe you, know, you will be knowing everything, but please adhere to the rules of KSR. Know it, understand. But if you are like trying to learn from beginning, this is the right place for you. With that, let's get started with SQL. And uh, just to give you uh, another overview, uh, this is one of the demand technology in the market. And it is expected that by 2028, almost 60 to 70 percent of all the people will be forced to learn data engineering. And this is the right technology for you in the beginning itself. Right. And uh, if you ask me, I need to reframe this. I can ask you an opportunity where you don't have for data engineers. There's nothing. There is no domain where you don't have opportunity. Every domain data is the key. And of course, everyone is here for getting the highest package and that you can easily get it in this role. OK, and uh, I've already told you who can go for this course. And with that, the reason why you you can join here will obviously be like we are going to explain live examples. Please be informed that I am not a officially or a complete trainer. I'm a working profession. So whatever I'm experiencing the company, I'm going to discuss here. OK, with that, let's get started with SQL. Let's get started with SQL. OK, for a couple of days, uh, initial days, you'll be seeing a lot of PPTs. But after two, three days, everything will be like practical. OK, imagine you have a car directly. You will never drive, right? The first two days, what you will do, you will clean up. You'll give a water wash. And you will set up everything, fill the tank, do everything. When you're starting a long journey, it's recommended that you test your uh, wheel pressure and uh, all your uh, basic checks. And that's what we are going to do for the initial two days. We are going to set up the foundation. With that foundation, after three four days, it's completely going to be practical. I hate to present in PPT, but unfortunately, if I keep talking, you'll sleep off. And that's why a PPT has been presented. It is only for two days. After that, you will be completely into practicals. OK, now as part of the agenda, we'll talk about what is SQL, the history of SQL. I'm a person who always believes in before learning the technology. It's good to know about history. In none of the data engineering interview, they're going to ask you about the history, but it's recommended to know it. OK, with that, we will see. Uh, why is it is important? We'll see about the popular databases and uh, finally will some installation before starting with any technology. It is recommended to learn how to install where to run the code and that's what we are going to learn. OK, again, I'm repeating to lift a rock. Two hands is required. The first hand is going to be SQL that is going to start from today. OK, now let's see how many of you remember this. On which day India had won the World Cup 2011? Come on, you're all Indians. Even if it's 12 years, it's India's World Cup. And we're all were active during that year, right? When did India win the World Cup? April 2nd. So 12 years down the line, 12 years. Now again, World Cup 2023 is in India. Will India win? Home ground? Is it true? How confident you are? Because yes, uh, no, uh, uh, confident. Okay, but India have a bad record losing in the ICC uh, semifinals and finals. Okay, let's leave that. Let's come to the next question. In which year did the first ever smartphone was introduced? In which year did the first ever smartphone was introduced? People mm -hmm. were sitting in front of the system. Come on, use chat, use chat GPT. 
1992 is it are you sure good to know the year i was born was the year the smartphone was introduced good to know now what happened on november 8 2016 anyone remembers this date demonetization what was demonetization can you anyone given brief okay mm -hmm. uh i still have couple of notes uh which was old 500 rupees note anything i can do or it's just a waste of paper now it's a waste paper okay now i'm a cricket fan so obviously i need to ask this question as well who holds a record of fastest one day 100 ab de villiers ab de villiers from south africa holds the fastest and odi one day 100 okay okay first five question i've given the clues what happened in february to not i mean 20, uh, 29 2009 February, what happened? No one knows. Before joining this class, how did you get email? I mean, how did you get about this link? When was WhatsApp introduced? Okay, forget about this. This is all old dates. 2011, 16 and all. If you ask, how will I know? Now comes the last two things which you have to remember. Okay, let's yeah. see. Okay, what about the other one? Okay, thank you so much. At least for the first five, I have to give a clue. And the last two, I was really happy. And 21st March 2020 is a day which I will never ever forget. And thanks to our Prime Minister, the day is organized. He announced the lockdown and work from home. And it's been three years. I'm still working from home. That's a good thing that he has done. Of course, it was done for a different purpose. But there are certain people who are benefited. I'm the one among them. Just because that I was being, I mean, I was being given a work from home. I'm taking a class for you now. If they have asked me to come to office, I would have not been taking a class to you. And the last one, even that's one of the very privileged Indian. Every Indian is very much privileged to proudly say that, yes, we did it. And the Chandran 3 landed on the moon in the South Pole on August 23rd, a day which you can never, ever forget. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How do I remember? Just a straightforward question to you. How we can remember all this? You go, you search in the Google, you will get it. Go and search what happened. When did India win? You will get it. What happened in February 20, 20, uh, 2009? You will get it. Who was the fastest one day 100? You will get it. Well, let me tell you, even if you search 50 or 55 years back, what happened? You will still get it. And one straight slogan I'll tell you, Today, you are able to get whatever you need. It's all because the tagline says something somewhere it is stored. That is the reason today you are able to get any data which you want. You can easily go and search. You can ask anything. You will still get it. And that's the slogan for you. Something somewhere it is stored. Where it is stored. And that storage place is what? We have a database. Database is a place where we are all storing our data. If you ask a cupboard in your home, there is a cupboard. What you will fill in the cupboard? Clothes. You have a library. What do you will fill with the library? You will fill it with books, right? Similarly, what you will fill with? What do you will fill a database? It's all that you are going to fill with the data. The word says data plus base. So database is a place where you're going to store all the records. And I keep saying this today. If you're able to get whatever you require, all the data has been stored somewhere where it is stored. It is stored in the database. With that, today, if I want to go and book a ticket, I can easily go and book. And if I want to go and um, Book a movie ticket, possible. And uh, let's talk about Red Bus. One of my close friends is working in Red Bus. So I'll take an example. I hope everyone has used a Red Bus. Red Bus is a, a application which you can book your train tickets and bus tickets. Usually we do it for bus tickets. For train tickets, we do have another app which we call it as a IRCTC app. So in this Red Bus, imagine that I'm storing the, I mean, imagine that I'm going and booking a bus ticket the moment you book a ticket initially it will be white okay and the moment you book a ticket it will show it a blue color the reason is you are already attempted to book a ticket another person who is trying to book the same ticket for him this ticket will show as block ticket 
it will be showing a blue color that means someone is already in progress of booking so the second person has to go and book another ticket all this how it is happening it is happening within the database so multiple people eating the same database the preference will be given to first in first out that means the people who have started a transaction first for them they will be given the priority okay now whatever the changes or multiple people are acting on it for everyone the data you can go and change it but it is like based in like first in and first out okay now there are 62 people in the class excluding me 61 all the 61 people all around the world whether you are in india africa south africa sri lanka pakistan australia anywhere you are are you all able to understand my language yes anyone who is not able to understand my language i'm speaking in a very basic english anyone who is not able to understand everyone is able to understand now by chance if i speak in kannada if i speak in telugu if i speak in tamil if i speak in malayalam if i speak in hindi can you all assure me that all 61 people will understand what is the likely chance that all 61 people will understand if i talk in a very common english if i speak in kannada obviously i'm from bangalore so if i speak in kannada people who are in south or people who are in karnataka will understand they'll be very much satisfied maybe if i speak in telugu people who are in telugu or maybe in andhra telangana wherever you are or people who have been brought up here and who are in us uk if they know telugu they can understand but i cannot promise all the 61 people will understand reason different people different language but KSR has asked me to explain everything in English. Reason, if I speak in English, I can convince all the 61 people present in this group. The reason, everyone knows English. If I speak in English and if I ask any question, you people will answer. Similarly, we have a database now. Similarly, we have a database. If I go and ask a database, hey, what happened in 2011? Do you think database is going to respond? It will not respond. If I ask in Telugu, I don't know how to ask in Telugu, but I'm just saying, if I ask in Telugu, what happened in 2011, will the system respond? No. If I ask in Kannada, what happened in 2011, will the database answer? Definitely no. The reason, I need to speak to a database in the language what database knows. Not in English, Kannada or Hindi or Malayalam. I need to speak to the database in the language what the database understands well that's the introduction to the database language which is called sql sql stands for structural query language and the most important part you need to remember is sql is used to communicate with the database if you ask in english what happened in 2014 2018 2019 the system is not going to respond if you go and ask what happened in 25 i mean 2005 it's not going to respond but if you ask in a language what the database will understand definitely you'll get the answer and what's that language that language is called sql right and your SQL statements help you to update the record, retrieve the record, all these things you can do because this is a one and only one language your SQL will, I mean, your database will understand, right? With that, let's move forward. I'll take a very simple example of pen drive. I'll take a very simple example of pen drive. This pen drive is a device which is used to store your data. This pen drive is a device which is used to store the data. In pen drive, we have different brand. One is Samsung, one is Sony, one is SanDisk, and one is Transcend. We have different brands. What is the difference between these brands? Anyone? Okay. Name. Then, okay. What else? Okay. One thing I need to tell is the working of pen drive doesn't change with respect to brand. Sony pen drive will also perform the same. Samsung pen drive also will perform the same. But what really differs is the small small feature how fast you can read the file how fast you can write the data into the pen drive all that matters with that the working of the pen drive doesn't change the meaning of the pen drive doesn't change the pen drive is used to store the record similarly when i'm talking about a database there are different database oracle database sybase database microsoft sql server Postgres, IBM, DB2, there are different databases. Each company will have their own brand of usage. But what really matters is 
the language which you are going to use with whichever database it is the own and only language which you can go and use as sql okay for example today i'm in india so if i'm i'm speaking to you all i'll speak a very basic english okay i don't want to use uh, all the complex words or vocabularies or a, a proper sentence that's not my purpose i'm not here to teach you english i'm here to teach you the subject so i don't care what i'm speaking as long as i make you to understand it's good but i'm working in a microsoft company tomorrow if i have a meeting with my clients do you think i'll talk in the same way definitely no when i meet my clients my fluency my communication my modulation my face my fastness everything will change but english doesn't change just light slightly the qualities of the way i speak changes but english never change similarly listen carefully whether you're talking to oracle database you're talking to a sybase database you're talking to a microsoft sql server the language is not going to change small small syntax is going to change when i go to a sri lanka i speak in a very slowly i mean slow manner than whatever i'm speaking i speak slow than this if i go to us my fastness of speaking will increase so obviously wherever i go i'm adjusting my modulation and amplitude that's the same thing which i'm doing whenever you're using sql is sql is like an english which will never change but in which database you're speaking slightly will have some difference but nothing to worry english is a english sql is a sql okay with that let's move forward and try to understand how data is getting to be stored here one common thing which we have between you and me is everyone has a common feature called name maybe my name is santosh your name is kiran your friend name is uh, like uh, anand or it could be divi it could be anyone right so name is a name but each one has a different value age age is a feature each one has the own value in that way what we are going to do is we have a position title we have a different title we have a education requirements we have a different education requirements we have a functional area we have a different functional areas well all this which is a very much common for everyone we call it as a column we call it as a column so name name is a column and what value it is whether it's a santosh or whether it's a kiran or it's a kumar so all this comes under the data points so let's say let's talk about a, a software engineer a software engineer a bachelor's degree engineering maximum pay minimum pay this acts like a one row this acts like a one row so either you can call it as row or you can call it as record your wish but an entire information for example santosh santosh is from bangalore bangalore is from ksr so all this details about santosh will be like one row okay now to give more context where this is all stored it is all stored in a storage which we call it as a table now specifically if you are asking with respect to software engineer with respect to software engineer what is the maximum pay you can expect if you are focusing on only one value we call it as a data point either we call it as a data point or we can call it as a data value so one which is very much common for everyone we call it as column and one we are focusing on only one complete information we call it as a row and your table is actually a place which consists of rows and columns and specifically if you are focusing on one value we call it as a data value or data point don't think too much we are going to see much more than this this is just an introduction what we are going to see as a data storage how data will be stored in a database will be in the form of a table right now let's move forward this is one slide which is very important in, in order to understand how sql is going to help you right now whenever we work with different projects i have a good uh, circle of people who are working in different organization okay we have already trained almost 3000 to 3500 people uh, in the last one year itself so different people are working in different organization we try to contact them and we'll check what technology you're working what is your day to day work and people who are working in my experience as well we have a very uh, basic interaction like what technology you're working and how you're going to use this technology with all that we got a statistics that sql is widely used in the market about 55% of all the projects companies use cases 
everyone using SQL. Why? It is one of the best technology which we use it for data processing. Today, it has been crowned as one of the best data processing means it cannot be crowned for without a reason. Correct? There should be a reason why it has been crowned as us first most technology for working with data processing. Okay. Uh, let me give you a brief layman explanation. Lion is not the biggest animal. Lion is not the smartest animal. Lion is not the fastest animal. And lion is not the best animal. But why is lion king of the jungle? Okay. I repeat. Lion is not the biggest animal. Lion is not the smart, smartest animal. Lion is not the fastest animal as well. And lion is not the best animal. Lion sleeps 20 hours a day. I don't know how many people know this. In 24 hours of time, lion, a lion sleeps 18 to 20 hours. I don't know when it will go for hunting. But still it is called king of jungle. Why? Find out. Find out. There is a one feature, one character of lion. Why it is always making it to be on top. Similarly, today I am talking about SQL. Simply one doesn't crown SQL to be the first most technology for data processing. There should be a very strong valid reason why SQL is always on top. Okay, find it out. But let's move on to the technical part now. Let's see why SQL is also important. Why SQL has been crowned as one of the best data processing language even today. Right? We'll try to understand that. Now, before getting into the subject, this is a slide which I don't like, but obviously I need to talk about it. Learning about a technology, it's always good to know about the history. SQL is there from 1970. It's almost 30 plus 23, 53 years. The technology is there from 53 years. And even at the 54th year, I can proudly say this is a technology which is ruling the world. What speciality is there in this technology? If you're people thinking, come to topic, yaar. why this is on top? If that is the one thing which I would like to tell about the history as well. This technology was introduced by Raymond Bronze and Donald Chamrin. It was, they started in the 1979, but obviously uh, it came into existence by 1970 itself. Uh, some people call it as SQL and some people call it as SQL. Okay, they have two names. Initially, uh, the name which was given is SQL. I, I, I like to call SQL. That's like a fancy word, but some people call it as SQL. Whether you call it as SQL, whether you call it as SQL, it's one and the same. But initially it was SQL only, but uh, there is a, a program name or I don't know whether it's some uh, uh, some other name they had already kept for, uh, they have used the name SQL. So because of the copyright issue, they changed from SQL to SQL. I mean SQL, but doesn't matter whether you call SQL or SQL, both are same. So don't get confused. In the interview, they ask, do you know SQL? You'll say, yes, 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 I know I've learned from KSR. If they ask you, do you know SQL? No, 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 Santosh did not teach me this. Don't think that both are same. SQL or SQL, both are same. With that, let's get back into why SQL is important. In order to explain why SQL is important, I'm going to take a two terminologies. One, I'll call it as OLAP and one, I'll call it as OLTP. This slide you will never understand now, but I'm going to give an example first. With that example, we'll see what is happening if this topic OLAP and OLTP, if you understand, you will definitely understand how SQL is going to be important for us. At this point of time, don't think too much about this. Let's jump into a, a live example. I have a two people, person A and person B. Each one has their own different accounts, bank accounts, and they have the most, I mean, they have their own balance. They have the bowl balance. Now, if this person has to send money to this person, Nowadays, in this uh, latest technologies, you can even send it in less than 10 seconds. How it is possible? GPay, phone pay, Paytm, right? You have n number of tools, apps that can send money. Now, imagine that the person A is choosing a Google Pay to send 2K and in the next second, he will just enter the, the other person's number and he will enter the UPI pin immediately after successful transaction. The amount should go and change. 6,000 should become 4,000. 1,500 should become 3,500. In how many seconds? 
less than five seconds. You may not get the message immediately, but please be informed that transaction would have been successful. Another example which I want to talk about is ATM. Okay, you go to ATM, you enter the pin and you enter the amount and immediately you will get one sound. Do you know what is that sound? You know what is that sound? Most satisfying sound. Yes or no? Most satisfying sound. None of the person in this world will be irritated with that sound. True or false? Yeah, anyone. I mean, I mean, Jan, imagine that uh, I'm like a bit frustrated with certain sounds, okay? Uh, like if any lorry or uh, any big vehicle is making some orange sound, I get irritated. I don't like that. And someone is uh, blowing some uh, musical instruments uh, very near to my ear, I get frustrated. I'll get a headache, right? There are certain sounds certain people will not like. But... There is no person in the world who will not like the sound. Most satisfying sound. Now, I'll give a use case. Just tell me, have you ever faced this situation in your life? You have a balance of 10K. You have a balance of 10K. 8 o'clock in the morning, you withdraw 2K. Okay. Unfortunately, it's a government holiday. Good to know that we are also taking sessions on October 2nd. It's a government holiday. Today, banks are on leave. And today, the share market is also closed. So, the today entirely is everything is closed. Today, I morning, I went and transacted. I withdraw 2K. Being a government holiday, bank did not update my balance. So, my balance is still 10K. Okay. My balance is still 10K. 10 o'clock in the morning. I again withdraw 2.5K. Bank is on leave. They have not updated my balance. Okay. One o'clock in the night, midnight, I mean afternoon, I withdraw 5K. Bank did not update my balance. I go and check my bank balance. It was still 10K. Then just before the class, I withdraw another 6K. So 6 plus 5, 11. 11 plus 2, 13. 13 plus 2, 15.5, I have withdrawn. 15.5K, I have withdrawn. Tomorrow, it's a bank working day. After seeing my balance, will they update my bank balance to minus 5.5K? Have you ever experienced this type of use case in your career? Why? No, forget about all this. I'm talking about a, just a simple saving account. Situation which I've said, this will be like impossible. Impossible, right? Even if tsunami comes, even if there is an earthquake, even whatever happens, whatever government holiday it may be, whatever leave it may be, the next second your balance will be updated. That's the power of data updation. Your messages may you may not receive, it's because of your it's network. Whether you are using Geo, whether you are using Airtel, or whether you are using Idea or whatever it is, you, you may not get the transaction message. That doesn't mean that bank has not updated. Don't blame the bank. You have to blame your network. Maybe they were on leave or bank did not send a notification. That's acceptable. But the moment you go and check in your iMobile or your net banking or your passbook statement, you will see with the seconds that when the withdrawal has happened. Now, this type of lightning speed transactions, I repeat, I repeat, listen, listen, listen. The way the transaction is happening at the lightning speed is possible only by SQL. No other technology can match the speed of this type of transaction. And that's why even today, SQL is always on top. The next second, see, sometimes, I don't know whether you people have observed or not, that counting sound you will get, right? That counting sound. By chance, if you have given 10,000 and it has to count 100 times if it's like 100 rupees note. And if it's like it has to count, just before the counting is done, also before that only you will get a message that the withdrawal has happened. That is how the lightning speed the transaction you can see here and no other technology can match the speed of SQL transactions. And I can proudly say that's why even today, after 50 years, SQL is on top. There are other technologies. Maybe you can do with a Python or maybe you can do with a Spark or you can do with a Hadoop. You can do with n number of technologies. But as and then I said, no other technology can match the speed of SQL transactions. Which is the fastest running animal? Is there any other animal who can beat the speed of cheetah? 
Is there any other animal who can beat the speed of cheetah? Your sequel is cheetah. Your sequel is cheetah. Straightforward answer. Your sequel is cheetah. No other transactions, no other technologies can match the speed of sequel. Are we good? Yes. Okay. This is called OLTP. This type of transactions where you're sending money to someone, we are sending to send, sending money to someone and you are doing it immediately in a lightning speed. This type of the technology which is like a lightning speed is this only one technology which is SQL. Now, whether it could be ATM transaction or it could be a GPA or a phone pay or whatever it is, the technology which is as fast as SQL, there is no other technology. Okay. Now, this is a one reason we call it as OLTP. Now, what is OLTP? The full form stands for Online Transactional Processing. The full form stands for Online Transactional Processing. OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing. Okay. And as far as I said, I've given you a live example. Your SQL is like a cheetah. No other technology can match the speed. Let's look into another one. Okay. Let's see another one. What is the cost of iPhone 15? Anyone? 150,000. What is there in that phone? Is it launched or what? 15 plus is there. 48 megapixel camera. And why is showing only 119,000? Did I have to choose anything here? iPhone Pro Max also should be there, right? Pro Max. So it says that, let me buy it, okay? Let me buy it. iPhone Pro Max, black color, one terabyte of space, uh, and uh, pin code. Okay, it's asking all details. Let's go and take the price. The price of the phone, iPhone 15 Pro Max, with one terabyte of space, the price is... MRP. I can't even read this. It's, it's a 2 lakhs. Okay. Question to you all. Do anyone have this phone? Why? Mm -hmm. Such a very good phone, right? 2 lakhs. Who will get this? Latest model. So if performance is good, you are ready to buy. Why? What is there in this? You will have one life, right? Why don't you buy? As if you get this life again one more time. One life. You are going to enjoy your life. Why can't you buy? 2 lakhs only, right? So uh, I also read your mind and I can listen to your mind reading. If I can buy this, why will I join your class? What about others? Is anyone thinking? Array, if I have, if I can afford for 2 lakhs phone, why should I sit in your boring class? Anyone? Most of you will be thinking, if I can afford this, why should I go and learn data engineering? Correct? Now, someone said, if, if we can gift, get as a gift, we will be happy. Right? Now, let me tell you one thing. For the next 15 minutes, listen carefully. If you can do what I say, if you can do what I say, I will give you this as a gift, spending money from my pocket. Even I don't have this phone. But if you can do what I say, I can give you gift. The maximum, this is the latest variant. 15 Pro Max is the highest version today. As of today, I don't know if you're seeing after one year, but as of today, 15 Pro Max is the latest version with a one terabyte, which is costing you two lakhs. I will gift you right away if you can do what you say. Is the deal okay? See, uh, I would expect, let whatever it be, let me give a try. Two lakhs, right? Why can't I win? Right? Let's go for the deal now. Let's go for the deal. Listen carefully. I have to, I mean, we will talk about this. Okay. I have a very, uh, let's, it's a small story. Let's talk about some small story. Forget about IT, uh, iPhone Pro Max. This is going to be your gift. This is going to be a gift. By chance, if you can achieve this, I'll give, I'll be gifting you spending from my pocket. Spending from my pocket. Okay. Don't tell anyone from uh, this one, like KSR. Okay. I'll be spending from my pocket. Now, I wanted to buy iPhone 12 a couple of years back. iPhone 12. Okay, when 12 was launched, right? I wanted to buy this iPhone. I Before, uh, I mean, we are all, uh, I mean, especially if I talk about myself, I'm a 90 kid, right? The 90s kids, you know how they are. I'm also a 90 kid. So anything which I purchase, the first thing is I'll go and ask my mom. Mom, can I buy this? I showed the phone, iPhone 12. Couple of years back, that was in 2021, before the lockdown, I asked my mom, Mom, I, I'm thinking to buy iPhone 12. She asked me how much. That time, the price was 1,29,000. Okay. The moment I asked this, one look she gave me, okay. It was actually death scare look. Death scare look. The look which she gave, she was asking like, 
one lakh twenty nine thousand, you are going to buy a phone. So immediately she went to room. Immediately she went to room. I was very happy. I think she is going to bring me money. So I just went to my room. I mean, she went to room, and I thought she will come back with money, or she may come back with some uh, amount what she has saved. She got me a she got me a bag, and she asked me to go out of the house. This is what happened. I thought she is getting some money, but she got me a bag, and she asked me, "You can get out of the house." This happened with me. I asked why. One lakh twenty nine thousand. What is there in that phone to buy? Maximum you will be in class. Whatever, whoever sends a message, you will never even respond. You will not even respond to me. Also, I keep asking, "Where are you? Where are you? When you will reach home?" That also you will not respond. You will not take photos. You will not attend anyone's call. You will not even do anything. Why you need that one lakh twenty nine thousand phone? She literally scolded me like anything. Before showing to her, I did few things. I opened the product in Amazon. I opened the product in Amazon. Okay, I added the product to the cart. I was about to buy. The last step is pending is to buy. I opened the product in Amazon. I added to the cart and I was showing her. The way she scolded, I thought I should never ever buy iPhone in my life. That much of sentimental words. I'm struggling hard. I'm working for you. We have done all this for you, and we have given you a good life. And you're going to waste money like this. I thought, okay, let me not buy. This was a day one. Day one, it happened. Okay, so immediately what I did, I dropped the plan. Dropped the plan. And you know, right? Usually, when we fight with our parents, the first thing is we stop eating, we stop sleeping, and we always will be in our room. This is what everyone do. Not only me. Even if you are, I mean, if you are a bachelor, you will worry for your all these things. Obviously, what you did. I was also like I did not eat for a couple of days. I was very sad. I whatever she gave me, I said no, I don't want. I don't know what. I don't want. Finally, she also got convinced. She said that, okay, don't worry, be happy at least one life. You enjoy it. Go by. She gave me a green signal. Okay, she gave me a green signal. She said go by. This happened on day two. I was very happy. Because getting a permission from my mom to buy this phone was very hard for me, so I was very happy. So I okay decided let me buy. But getting a grow green signal from parents is not a big deal. I wanted to check the feedback, so I asked my friends. I asked my friends. I discussed, and when she said that don't buy, I actually dropped the plan. Okay, I actually dropped the plan. This is a fourth step which I did. So when I say drop the plan, I also removed from the cart, cart. Okay. Then day two, when she said that go buy, I again added the product in Amazon. Focus on story as well as focus on steps. What I am doing that is very important for the challenge. Focus on the steps. I added to the cart. Just before buying, here I check with my mom. Here I am check with my friends. Okay, friends. Now what they said? Hey, don't buy. iPhone twelve is having lot of issues. It seems it lot of complaints is coming. You're spending that much, and something happens. What you will do? You don't go and buy. Even I also felt the same. Why I'm buying one lakh twenty nine thousand? Already, I my mom also scolded day one. So why am I spending? Let's go and drop the plan because he gave lot of negative feedback. That color is not good. Uh, once you drop it, it's done. Any iPhone you take, it is worth only for three years. Every three years, you will be getting more and more versions. So it's a, it's like actually a, not a good investment for you, right? So all this made me to again drop the plan. Whenever I'm dropping the plan, I am removing from the cart as well. Cart is where I can add the products and I remove it. Day three, I directly check from. Amazon, I sorry, I I already checked from Apple feedback also. The feedback was good, so again I added the product into the cart, and again I added to the cart. This time I did not ask anyone. I took my own decision, thinking, 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 thinking. And if you are thinking on a specific product for more than seven days, you will definitely drop this product. This is a human psychology. I am saying you this, you can try it. 
day one you add it you remove it and you you keep on deciding can i buy this can i buy this can i buy this and if you're still thinking on the seventh day that means that product is really no need for you you would have experienced this yes or no if you want it you will immediately buy it you will not wait for seven days same thing happened day three only i got frustration so much of research so much of this i immediately dropped the plan immediately i dropped the plan now coming to the climax of the story you know what happened on day four you know what happened on the day four you bought the, it the phone price that was showing is not this not this they had scratched this amount mm -hmm. and they had given me the phone price to be nine 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 this happened on fourth day trust me this happened the original price was 1,29,000. The fourth day, they had scratched that amount of 1,29,000 and they had given me 99,000 as the price. Keeping Santosh's story aside, let's talk from Amazon perspective. Amazon, what they are thinking is, what happened to this guy? He's coming, he's adding to the cart and he's removing it. Day two, is coming, is adding to the cart, is again not buying. Day three is coming, is adding to the cart, is not buying. Now tell me what is stopping him to buy this product? This is thinking from Amazon perspective. This is thinking from Amazon perspective. How Amazon works, I'm telling you. Amazon is thinking, this per person is interested in buying the product. He goes and sees the colors. So all the zooming he sees, he keeps seeing the features. He's keeping, see, whatever I'm spending, the amount of time I'm spending on the screen, Amazon people will know, right? So for today, for example, 9, 10, I open an Amazon screen. I open an Amazon screen. Okay. If I open this, so they will tell me, like, I I've already logged in. So they will tell me, like, what are the products I'm browsing? So everything they will see. How much time I'm spending or am I going and reviewing this? So how much, pro, uh, what is the review I'm seeing? All this they will go and show. This is the exact thing what I was speaking about. 1,29,000 of the MRP price. They have cancelled it and they have shown me 99,999. This is the exact thing that happened. In fact, I think I've added here also. If you see here. 1,39,000 iPhone 14 Max, they have 1,40,000, they have scratched it and they have given us 1,27,999. The same thing happened here for me. I'll tell you how this happened. Amazon is a company which doesn't manufacture iPhones. They are an intermediate people who are selling these products to the end users from the source. But they are not manufacturing it. For them, even if they are selling for 99,000, they will still make a profit. They would have got for 90,000. That's why they are selling it for 99,000. If they would have sold it for 1,29,000, they would have made a huge profit. But from Amazon perspective, I am actually dropping the plan. So what they think is, this guy is interested and is not buying. This guy is interested is not buying. He is interested is not buying. What is stopping him to buy? Let's try to give him some discounts. Let's try to give some cash backs. Let's try to give some no EMI option or zero EMI option, zero processing fees. Let me give him some options and let's make him to buy. Please remember, only if you buy, Amazon is a company that will generate revenue. If all the people put a strike and I'm not going to buy anything in Amazon, Amazon share will definitely go down. You people are buying they are making revenue. One of the best e-commerce platform today, as of today, I can proudly say that it's, it's Amazon. And that's the reason they are giving all these offers for you. Even if you buy it for 99,000, you will still get the product, but company will still generate revenue. Now from Santosh mindset, if you see, hey, initially it was a six digit phone. I have to pay for 1,29,000. Now it is actually reduced to 1 lakh. Why can't I give a try? Why can't I buy a product? And this is what is like thinking and changing your brain's activity. By giving offers, by giving discount, they're actually making you to buy it. 
they'll give you a recommended products if you buy it you will get one scratch guard if you buy it you will get a screen guard you will buy one you will get a uh, like back case you'll get a charger some recommendations they'll give you some recommendations they'll give you and they will make you to buy they'll make you to buy and that's what that's what your amazon is doing the reason if you buy they will generate revenue now coming to the climax you know why they have done this they want you to buy the product at any cost because you've been browsing you've been utilizing their browser you've been using this activities everything you're doing but you're not buying they want you to buy even though they're selling it for 99000 they will still generate revenue according to them something is better than nothing if you drop off it's a loss for them but if you still buy for 99000 something is better than nothing with that concepts they try to give offers discounts cashbacks emi options and then exchange phone exchange all these options they will start giving you which may not be applicable for anyone who is newly adding again to the cart for the person who is adding to the cart he may not see this price he may still this price maybe he's giving me offers but he will put the amount to someone else this is what is happening now come to the challenge if you do this challenge I will get you this product okay iPhone 15 I will gift you as a gift you know what you need to do day one add a product any product you add it's not only a, a phone you can add your headphones speaker television uh, or you can use uh, you can go with a keyboard laptops you add anything add a product take a screenshot the screenshot is for me to understand that you have really taken a product add a product to the cart okay in next 20 minutes start browsing about that product start browsing about the product okay when i say start browsing start reading the reviews start going and seeing the colors everything by night remove the product from the cart The reason why I've taken asked you to uh, take the screenshot is I need to see the price. And I also want to say with the time, date and time. So entire screen you need to take. For example, if this is a product you have taken. So this is a product, right? Take a snipping tool. Take the complete screen like this. So that I can see you the time. I can see you the time and this time and along with the product which you have browsed it and this is the main thing which i want this is the main thing which i want do is take a screenshot and remove from the cart day two do the same thing again you already removed it add a product screenshot remove it day three do the same thing Day four, if you don't see any change here, now I don't have any new EMA option, no cashback, right? Simply they have scratched and they have given you this. Day four, if you don't see any offers, discounts, cashbacks, EMI option, along with the product which you have selected, along with the pro product which you selected, I will gift you 15 Pro Max. This is a challenge. Is the challenge accepted? Same account. Same account. I want the snapshot with the time. This part I need main screenshot. So that after three days, let's see what changes is going to happen. And I want to see the same account what you have logged in. Is the challenge accepted? That's why I'm saying something or other will change. It is not for everyone. Only for you it will mm -hmm. change because you are the person who is actively browsing, using the uh, up adding removing so they know it they are interested but you're not buying 100 percent they will give you cashbacks or discounts or options some other or the other way they will try to make you buy is a challenge accepted i have worked in amazon i know how they work my previous company i worked with amazon 
today confidently for 60 people when i'm saying that i can give you 2 lakh product do you think i would have not done this research do you think i would have just given you this offer 100 percent this will happen this is how the company is working i know the complete in and out of amazon directly why will i go and say i'll give you two, two lakh product whatever i said it's true prove me wrong i'll give you the product now keeping all this challenge aside what is happening now what is happening now what is happening now we are going to another one which is called olap in olap what is using is let's consider an amazon user is trying to buy a product and but something is stopping him now amazon has analyzed his last three day activities and they come up with some discounts well this is not is happening in the attempt one it's not happening like your atm transaction which your up your account is getting changed in 30 seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds this is not at all the case they have analyzed for three days three days they've closely analyzing your activities how many times you're coming to amazon how many times you're adding the product to the cart how many times you're removing the product to the cart how many times you have browsed the product something is stopping to buy and that is why they have given you the offer this is not a one minute process this is a three day complete analysis of your activities and this type of analysis and transaction we call it as online analytical processing the other type of transaction that we have is online analytical processing so your online transactional processing is as fast as your atm transaction and the one more is online analytical processing which is nothing but your they will analyze your activity for three days day one you go and add it and you remove the card next they're not going to give any offers or discounts they're going to monitor for three to four days and they will assume that this guy is interested but something is stopping them to buy let's go and give a let's go and give a discount that's how it works confidently when i'm saying you also need to understand how can santosh can say this how can santosh can send spend from his pocket that means we have to believe that it's true if you're feeling that it's not true amazon is yours mobile is with you website is with you do it take a screenshots come back to me after four days yeah this is how i buy products in amazon i trust you <laughs> this is what happens okay now two type of transactions we have seen i've told you in the beginning you will never understand this slide but now we have two type of transactions one is online transactional processing one is online analytical processing i'll give another example for online analytical processing for the online analytical processing you can have it as a netflix also you see keep watching two to three movies and the next fourth day they will recommend your movie which is similar to you what you have watched recommended movies have you all observed this how it works immediately first to movie only they will not go and recommend all your movies they will watch what you have done for three to four days what type of movies you're watching the fourth day they're going to recommend the movie for you and that's exactly what we call as online analytical transactional processing ol olap it's called olap okay now i'll ask i'll tell you one statement listen carefully listen carefully which is the fastest running animal which is the slowest running animal tortoise is animal or what something which is, stays on land as well as in water what do you call i'm not from all the school and all i don't remember crocodile 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 also says something it's not is it an animal we have something called reptiles uh, i don't know hippopotamus sloth okay let's keep it as tortoise let's keep it as tortoise listen to the statement carefully can tortoise match the speed of cheetah listen 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 can tortoise match the speed of cheetah confidently tell no be no. confident other question can cheetah walk as low as tortoise two contradictory statement do you know the meaning the first one i'm asking can tortoise run as speed as cheetah no can cheetah walk as slow as tortoise Yes. For fast also, you can use SQL. For slow also, you can use SQL. But if cheetah is walking as slow as tortoise, then there is no, uh, what do you say? Uh, it's not a proud moment for cheetah, right? I am not born to walk slow. But 
I can do it. That's the attitude of SQL. If you want to have a slow analysis, I can do it. If you want to have a fast analysis, I can do it. But I am known for lightning speed. And that's why today I can proudly say that, yes, I am the boss. I am the boss. With that, I'll stop here. We'll continue the next class. Today, my main focus was to understand the first part, which was SQL. And I wanted to explain you why it is important. For that, I've given you two use cases. One is a OLAP and one is a OLTP. SQL can be used for both. But as in then, Cheetah is known for his fastness. If it walking as slow as tortoise, it doesn't make sense. Similar, but it can walk. Similarly, SQL can force a process as fast as possible it can also process as slow as possible but it is known for your fast processing and that's the slide for you sql is the boss clear we'll stop here